Hey guys, this is another feature we are shipping to help you write better and faster applications. Last week, we took a look at the new mutable JavaScript variable feature and we talked about how you can use it to manage local application state. We looked at the pros and cons when compared to using the local storage API. So if you missed that video, go check it out. It's an awesome feature that is going to help you write better JavaScript on AppSmith. But today, we will be looking at a much awaited feature which is going to help you write even better code. It's called widget setters and it's going to help you write cleaner and faster code. So this is going to be a quick video video and to keep it brief, we'll take a look at what life was like before the widget setters feature was introduced and then we'll wrap up by looking at uh, what this feature, the widget setters feature brings to the table. My name is Confidence and I'm a developer advocate at AppSmith. Without any delay, let's get started. All right, so to help us understand the value the widget setters feature brings, let's take a look at what life was like before this feature existed. So if you needed to update the property or state of a widget, how would you go about it? So let's look at that. So let's imagine we're building a simple app as is shown on the screen right here. We have a text widget, which is currently empty and we can go type stuff in and it's displayed in the text widget. We also have a button that could be clicked on to randomly generate a text on the text widget and also the color for the text widget. So here the challenge is updating the widget state. And how do you go about doing that? Uh, before now, you had to use the AppSmith store or the local storage API, and it was a little bit tedious to set it up. So I'm just going to show you an example. Um, so what we have right here um, is two functions. We don't have to worry about the details of this function, but the functions here, starting with the first function, is going to help us generate a random color. And the second is going to help us generate a random text to be displayed in the widget. Now we're going to consume these functions and the problem is showing you how it was to update state on widgets previously uh, before the widget setters feature existed. So let's create a new JavaScript file and let's try to solve this problem. All right, so I'm going to call this file app.js and we are going to have just one function in this file. Now I'll call this function the update uh, text function, right? Uh, so first thing I want to do is grab the text and the color, and then I'll actually walk you through updating this widget. So first let's grab the greeting, const greeting is equals to utils.gen greeting. All right, and there we have the greeting. Then we also want to generate the color, right? So this is const color is equal to utils.gen color. I want to pass in a string to this, so we can just pass in the greeting string and we are good to go. And now here comes the challenge. How do we update the widget state? So previously you had to rely on using the AppSnit store or the local storage API. And like I mentioned earlier, it was a bit tedious. So the first thing you want to do here previously is you had to create variables in the store and set the values accordingly. So let's uh, create a variable. So we're going to create a variable in the store called greeting. And this is how you go about doing it. You pass in a key containing the name of the variable and then the actual value of the variable, which is going to be in the greetings constant we declared earlier. And the same also goes for color. So let's say uh, store value color and this is going to be color. All right, now we have this variable stored. The moment this function is executed, these variables will be stored, but it doesn't automatically mean that the widget is going to get updated because don't forget, we want to programmatically set the state of the text widget. So after having that variable stored, you then need to go on to create bindings in a text widget to have it updated, which is very tedious, by the way. So you go into the text property, for instance, and you want to write a binding that reads from the store. So this is going to be greeting. All right, and let's go update the color as well. So this is text color. We're going to do store dot color all right so now we have this binding setup which took 
a long time and if we go on to click on this button it's actually going to uh generate the colors but we're yet to create bindings for it so whenever the button is clicked on what i want to do is make sure we execute the javascript function and this is going to be the app.js file and the object text function now we can go click on it and you can see that this generates a text with the color and we can keep clicking to generate a new text with a new color and uh yeah it works right but it was a bit tedious to update the state of this widget that's because we had to rely on using the local storage api to achieve this but there's a better way and that is using the widget setters and let's take a look at it right now now imagine if you could update the state of this widget by calling a setter function just like you would in react wouldn't that be awesome it will, right? So let's uh, actually take a look at this feature and what it enables you to do. So I'm going to duplicate this um, page. So let's clone the page and I'll edit this to say widget setters. All right. And we can go into the app.js file and make a few changes. So what I'm going to do is delete almost everything we have in this file. We have everything completely cleaned up and uh, we're going to use the setter function that each widget on AppSmith now has. So following the release of this feature, all the widgets you have on AppSmith, all widgets on AppSmith now come with setter methods for you to programmatically update the state and it's much cleaner this way. So I'm going to go open up the app.js file and let's update the text of the text widget. So this is text1.set text. All right, and we can pass in the greeting. And that's it, that's the entire thing, that's the whole thing. Let's also update the text color. So this is going to be text1.set text color. And here I'm going to pass in the gen color function so that it knows what color to update with. And that's all I need to do. Now, because we copied this page from the previous example, I'm just going to go on to delete the bindings we had on the text widget because they are no longer required, right? We don't need to have these bindings anymore. Now, if I go on to click on the button, we have the exact same experience. And you notice that this is actually a bit faster than the previous example, right? Did you notice that? So it's not only cleaner, it's actually also faster. And taking a look at this code, this is actually much easier to understand. Now, using this feature comes with several benefits. For one, like we've been discussing, it is a lot less code to write. This is actually cleaner. It's easier to understand because you're not creating uh, temporary variables in the local storage and rereading them into the UI by creating bindings. It's just directly done from a single line of code. Something you also notice, like we talked about, is that your app stays fast and efficient because you're not dependent on the local storage, which could be overkill for doing something as simple as updating the state of a widget right so you should actually go ahead to use the widget setters and best of all it makes more sense to express logic this way which is going to be a huge plus when you do need to onboard developers to help build your applications with you because this is way easier to reason about and the learning curve is much lesser than using the apps itself so these are some of the features of the widget setters feature and like i mentioned this is available on all of the widgets we have on the platform the text widget the button widget the table widget the list widget you name it it's all available and you should go explore this feature in depth all right so that's it for today's video if you'd love to learn more go check out the video we made earlier last week on using the new mutable javascript variable feature and we also made this video here on using the javascript editor how to go about using the javascript editor that's all for today's video see you next time take care don't forget to get subscribed bye bye